tonight on Kutsimi. I think it's good to know when to quit. And I think I didn't know when to quit. It's that time again. Grab the crew and let's chat. Going to work for someone is not a bad thing. Yes. We've suddenly become all entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entrepreneur. Yes. And I heard recently there were two million new entrepreneurs in Zimbabwe. Two million. Two, yeah, when does If you start a business and you go away for a week or two. And it shuts down. And it shuts down. No sales, no, no nothing. No sales, no nothing. Iwe, Shamariangu, you are self-employed. Welcome to Kutsime, Asisanga Neni, Let's Chat, Ikamangu Beki, and I am here with my people, Chuck Gnosis, baby, on the decks. To my left, Honey Boo Boo, or Kanisha, and to my right, Natasha. How y'all doing? You're good. You're good. good? good. Yeah. All right, so remember to comment, like, and share. And if you haven't subscribed, please click on the subscribe button. And also, every Tuesday at 7 p.m., the conversation continues on Kutsime Extra. Right, so that's all the household issues out the way. Yeah, I think you covered everything. Right? I don't think you left anything out. Yeah. I, did, I did good. I, I did think good. you did amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Right, getting into today's topic, Indaba, Enkulu, Enkalagata, because everyone just wants to talk about it, especially in Zimbabwe, in Africa, in the world. Everywhere, literally. Everywhere, because Wonku Muntu, Ufunuba, a businessman or a businesswoman, we are talking entrepreneurship, but in particular, Zim entrepreneurship. Gatle, gatle, entrepreneur, what do you understand by entrepreneurship or being an entrepreneur? Well, I would definitely say an entrepreneur is someone who sets up a business, mm -hmm. uh, obviously reaping all the rewards and taking all the risks. Reaping the rewards, taking all the risks. To my personal understanding, it's mm -hmm. basically just take, turning a dollar into ten. Making the man. I like that. Make a dollar, make ten. Chuck, what do you understand or what's your take on entrepreneurship? Uh, in my line of work, my industry, boys with owners, you know. <laughs> Basically hustlers, you know, be just to break it down in simple terms and exactly what Natasha said, but somebody going out there and making money. Not going necessarily taking all the risks, but just trying to make money. Just make the money. All right, so my understanding on entrepreneurship, which is still something that I'm trying to fight with because it isn't all about making money. Right. If you're an entrepreneur, it's you have started a business. Yes. And if you go away for a week or two, the business continues, you still making money. Yes. You, my friend, are an entrepreneur. However, if you start a business and you go away for a week or two. And it shuts down. And it shuts down. No sales, no, no nothing. No sales, no nothing. Iwe, you are self-employed. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know the difference. Yes. I don't know if I'm right or I'm just... No, hungry. I think you're quite right. But also, we know we have self-made, we have entrepreneurs, but we also have those get rich people. Oof. Do you get what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. they have, they're so quick to just look for what's missing in the market. They, they fill it. But mm -hmm. what they're not understanding is you're just filling it for that moment. For that moment. It's not going to be a forever thing. It won't generate you income for the next, maybe even five years. Yeah, you're just true. filling it for that part. I remember Pagata phase, yes, you would. The, the quail. The quail. <laughs> Everyone I heard was so selling. much about it. Everyone, Chucks, didn't you sell you would? <laughs> <laughs> it did cross my mind, but no. <laughs> what made you not get into it? It's not for me. You get me? Some of these things are not for you. Uh, you know what I mean? You might be in a situation where you're desperate, you're scratching your head, trying to find out how can I turn this dollar into $10? But certain things are not made for you. You get me? There's some guys who can sell anything. But when you try to do that, you just hit a brick wall. You know what yes, I mean? Yeah. So definitely. some of these things are not for you, but not saying you should give up, right. but find what you can do and then make it work. True. So would you say the forex, chain, forex dealing falls into the get rich quick scams? Well, get rich quick schemes, yes. should I say? Yes. <laughs> um, yes. 
Oh, okay, oh, okay, Chuck, no, no, take it. Yes, it is. I mean, I have a lot of friends who do that for a living. I mean, they've got houses, My they've got cars, money. and... Um, what did but you I say? Think they're making, I think money. they're making yes. the most money at the moment. They are making that a is, killing. That is like the best thing to be in at the moment. But this is still informal sector. At such a time, formal sector. This is still informal sector, but they are making a killing. Because when they go formal, apparently there's a lot of things that go wrong. Same applies to people when they register their companies for businesses. Anti-entrepreneur. <laughs> you call yourself an entrepreneur. You have to have a registered Kanban. But people don't want to register their companies because tax. Yeah. yeah everyone's scared of tax. They are rent you, you. I would know. <laughs> you would know. Yeah. But why do you think is the reason why they run away from paying tax? To be honest, I feel it's just greed. Because they want, okay, I made a sale. But like the Bible, I want it all. Yes, they would just want it. They want the sale for themselves. True. But the Bible says, "Give Caesar what Caesar's." So yeah. give the taxman what the taxman's. You know what I'm saying? Pay your tax. Pay your dues. Yes. Yeah. Simple. Becky, I thought you'd be going hard on paying tithes, <laughs> paying your taxes. A, as a business person, I definitely that's my pay you tax. Like to, but you if like I to... register my company, I'm definitely also going to register for tax. But also another issue that stresses business people or entrepreneurs in Zimbabwe is the economic terrain. Everyone is always complaining about yeah, yeah, yeah the economy this, the economy that. Natasha, you said something profound, and I looked at you different. I'm like, you know, you call yourself an entrepreneur, but mm -hmm. you're telling me about the economy. The economy will always be there. Issues right. in the economy will always be there. If you wait until the economy gets better, you'll amount to nothing. Start now and finish strong. It's about the starting and the finishing. Definitely. And never Words ever to think, live by. true, never ever think that, um, you know what, I'm scared to start because I'm going to fail. I don't know if you've heard about falling forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fall forward, fail. Start again, pick yourself up and fall forward. That's absolutely correct, Natasha. Now, we are going to take a look at one of Zimbabwe's savvy entrepreneurs. They call him the doctor. Here is Chamu Chiwanza Kutsi Makuna. I must highlight, though, before I start, that I'm a big fan of the girls, of the three girls, and I'm a big fan of DJ Chuck as well. Well, my journey to entrepreneurship uh, started um, must I say, when I was 19 years old, I've, I've been in the game for a, for a while now. And I must say, I've cut across the board, I've done almost everything, from selling frizzes to driving a combi and to selling cell phones at Zimax Mall. So I must say, uh, I've picked up a couple of two nuggets uh, on how to be an entrepreneur. Um, I, to just quickly just give advice to those who want to be entrepreneurs or those entrepreneurs who just want to go into the next step. I must say I'm into many businesses right now. I'm into construction, I'm into transport, tracking, I'm into finance. Um, uh, what I can share with you as a, as a nugget, what I've learned as the principle to live by in, in life is if you make your money the hard way, your life will be easy. But if you make your money the easy way, your life will be hard. So make sure you live by those principles. And if I'm going to give also advice, is if you want to go far in life, surround yourself with positive people. Do not be hesitant to cut off people that you think are negative. Hey, what's poppin'? Mama's Pop Snacks! Melted goodness. Chamuchi Wanza, no wonder they call him the savvy entrepreneur or the doctor. Powerful points right there, but one thing stood up for me there, checks. I did not know. That I'm a big DJ. A ah, big DJ. <laughs> big. No, uh, yeah, I've, I've known Chamu for a bit. I'm um, just not sure about the freeze it did. But mm -hmm. yeah, he's come a long way and uh, he's a very successful businessman. You yeah, actually stand by what he said. I believe if you're going to get into business, start small. There's no need or there's no use in rushing into it when you don't have your structures in place. So me, start small and 
have work you, your way up. Have you ever thought of people that actually don't start, the dream dies in your head? Oh, definitely. True story. They talk yeah. about it until... So I think the point of there is just to start. That's true. Start, get, get, get the idea going. Once the idea is going, go big. Surround yourself with positive people. I mean, there's a lot of people around you that are going to be like, you can't do this. You can't amount to the that. The naysayers, as they're called. Just block. True story. And go for it, yeah. And what also stood out for me, especially was when he said, if it comes easy, it won't, it won't last. last. Mm -hmm. So he's basically saying, work hard for anything and everything that you want to be successful. Yeah. I think that was really... We awesome. actually learned a few things right there. Thank you so much to Chamu Chiwanza. When we come back, we have a guest in studio and we talk all things Zim Entrepreneur. Stay tuned. We'll be back. A good conversation is enjoyed and appreciated over time. Kutime Extra is the platform where we talk a whole lot more. Catch Kutime Extra every Tuesday on our Facebook page. Kutime Asilanga Neni. Let's chat. Welcome back. It is Kutime Asisanga Neni. Let's chat. We continue the talk, all things Zim entrepreneurship. Now, when you're starting your business, you want to make sure everything is planned out right. You've got your ducks in a row. You just want to get the business up and running. Now, to help us with this talk, as promised, he is here with us in studio. He is the executive producer and creator of Battle of the Chefs, co-founder of Joey's Pizza. I really hope there's some pizza for us after this. And he also co-produced the first ever Zim film to make it on Netflix. Chucks, give me some noise. <laughs> the cook-off. If you haven't watched it, what are you doing? Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Joseph Bunga. Yes, I made it onto your show. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> That is super thank exciting. You. Well, thank you for that. You know, I'm feeding off your vibe. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Joseph. Totally thrilled to be here. Um, I've just been seeing you guys online and I'm blown away by what you're doing. And I think it's wonderful to see young people take charge. Mm. And I think that's what Zim is really, really desperate to see. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because we're about to take charge because we want some answers, Joseph. We are struggling with this business thing. You ready? Definitely. We can't wait to hear your side of the story. Yeah, my side is not always pretty, <laughs> but I'm always happy to share. Isn't that the, the real definition of an entrepreneur? So, you know, I think when you say definition of an entrepreneur, I think it's where it takes you saying I'm an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. okay. I think that in the global context, not really. Not really. Yeah, maybe in the Zimbabwean context, right? <laughs> okay. Zim context, right? And I know we're talking Zim context. Mm -hmm. I think we have to really be clear about what is it to say you've made it. And guys, we've got so far to go, hey? We've got so far to go. And I don't mean to burst your bubble right now. You get what I mean? So I, yes, we've done a lot of things, but mm -hmm. I think there's so much we have to do mm -hmm. as a country. So yes, we've started, but come on, in the grand scheme of things, we have right. so much more to do. Where do you think we are missing it as Zimbabweans in terms of being an entrepreneur? Why are we not breaking that point? So I've heard you speak about the economy. I could use that same excuse, but I think the reality is you know, every generation can make a certain amount of a leap, right? Okay. So if you've started, so my parents, both teachers, mm -hmm. there's only so far I can really go from in business, for example, right? A lot of people see me Indian and they think, ah, mom and dad had a shop down Harare Street. He knows how yes. to manage the show. <laughs> I had no clue about those things, right? Mm -hmm. So even on, on the business side, I'm learning from scratch. So there's a whole lot of learning that I've had to do. Yeah? Okay. And I think you also have to be cognizant of the leap that you want to take, uh -huh. right? So five years for me to just figure out. What you want to do? To shoot the first clip okay. of Battle of the Chefs. Five years. Five years. Planning. Wow. Yeah. All the time just saying, what, how does it work? You know? And that's a lot of investment, hey? True. What made you keep, keep on keeping on? Right. So I think it's a little bit of crazy. Explain Nothing that. We, we have to hear that side of the story. <laughs> so I think it's good to know when to quit. And I think I didn't know when to quit. <laughs> right? Okay. So I think there was a bit of crazy. There's no doubt about that. And a bit of crazy is good. Right? If you've got something else going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've had multiple projects running. 
And because I wrote my five-year plan and said, like, 2015, I want to do Battle of the Chefs, you know, and I worked at it little by little, little by little when I was working on something else. Mm -hmm. But I think the most important thing in my particular case is to have a supportive partner. Oh, I think wow. that's, for me, I would say that's the, that's the key. So I couldn't have got here if I didn't have someone at home who would say, you know what, let's keep doing it. Let's keep trying. Okay. I think that's really important. And I'm using my... My example. It doesn't your, mean that your, everybody your needs to. Your personal experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I think that's, that would be one of the keys. Okay. I would like to understand then. I want to talk a little bit about failures. Obviously, you, you were saying that you had a little struggles here and there. You wanted to stop. But so what failure, what was the biggest failure you actually faced? I would like to know. Okay. So one of the biggest, um, I think, hard memories for me has to be sitting in a, in a headmaster's room with my wife while she's crying and letting the headmaster know that we won't be bringing our kids back to school next term because we just didn't have the money. And for me, that particular point was just like, what am I doing? You know, it's almost like... You felt like you had failed your family as a whole, not absolutely. just your kids, but absolutely. like your family as a whole. Plus, you're chasing your dream, but who's making the sacrifice? Is it you? No, it's now stopped being you. Yeah, who's now suffering? your whole family is making a... A sacrifice on your behalf and this was my firstborn grade seven the uh, second term at an important grade at an important grade did that not push you more to say you know what i have to do better i have to succeed this is all i got going for me did that not make you want to fall forward as i mentioned earlier in the show i think it did but you know what um when you're in that moment you're just hurting you're raw you get what i mean mm -hmm. but i mean i look at my son now and I look back and I'm like, wow. And I actually said this to a friend of mine a few days ago. I was like, you know, maybe the failure thing was actually good, you know? Because mm. I tell you, just before all this happened, we were, we were flying, hey? We were flying. And then suddenly the crash and then all this happens. But every weekend I have time with my family. I love it. I absolutely love it. Sounds good. And I'm thinking that it, maybe that was a bit of a reality check. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I'm a producer of a reality show. <laughs> so, yeah, I, and you know, I want to be clear. I'm not suggesting anyone should fail intentionally. Okay. You but it I mean? is going to happen. It's going to happen. And I know that that's one strength I definitely have. Okay. I'm not scared of the failure. Okay. You know, I, and I always say to people, when you fail, the idea has failed. It can be your idea, but you are not a failure. So... Have another idea. And I tell you, the chest of ideas mm -hmm. are plenty, which is something that I think we all Zimbabweans have in common. True. But we need more doers, not just Thinkers. idea generators. Yes. Oh, we need more doers and not just idea generators. I think you mentioned that, that how many people will sit with an idea and sit with an idea and sit with an idea and not put the first foot forward to actually Absolutely. make it happen. Absolutely. Now, Joseph, our time is running off for this segment, but we are going to come back with Joseph and we're going to hear from his side about family and business. Like, do the two go together? Do you believe in passing it on to your children? Don't answer yet. Don't answer yet. I need you to think about it because you mentioned you're Indian and we know Indians do it a lot. And then you just also mentioned that your parents were teachers and they didn't teach you nothing. Not about business. About oh, business. they taught me a whole lot of other things. A whole lot of other things except for business. When we come back, more from Joseph Bunga. Stay tuned. A good conversation is enjoyed and appreciated over time. Kutime Extra is the platform where we talk a whole lot more. Catch Kutime Extra every Tuesday on our Facebook page. Kutime, asilanga neni. Let's chat. Joseph Bunga with us in studio. So, Joseph, when we closed off the other segment, we're talking about family and business. What are the pros and cons of continuity in terms of business? Would you continue the same line of business, like passing it on from father to son, from grandfather to son, until like 50 generations? I have no intention of doing that. I think the world is changing so fast. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it would be unfair for me not to, then to say I have no intention of doing that. While my son, who's 17 now was a clapper boy on Battle of the Chefs season two. Okay. Do you know what I mean? He started doing that. Um, he's behind the camera now, but it's not because he's my son. It's because that's what he's choosing to try. And he hasn't made a decision on that that's what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. And there's, he's not the executive producer's assistant. He's some, and he doesn't report to me. 
you get what I mean? So I think that's an important thing about passing on. I have no intention of, of passing it on to, to him. And they have to make their choices. And I know that, um, so we've homeschooled, we've done lots mm. of these different things. And that's given us a chance to let them experiment. In so this I'm, generation, like you, you will not force your son, Kutisha, Nakatanga, this thing, you're going to finish it off. No, you won't do no, that? no, 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 not at all. Because I think it's crazy. You know, the passion that I have, if he's not in for that, or he or she. So my daughter, Rebecca, has just started her online store. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now she is more likely to show an interest in business than, than my son. Right. But even with her, she's interested in business. She wants to be a pediatrician. She has no interest in, in film. Okay. Right? So why? And hey, but don't forget, I don't only do film, right? There's so many different things. So yes, I'd like to set up a financial security for them, okay. but definitely not have them in the business. Yeah, I think corporate structure is very important. Okay, can I take you back to fa failures sure, for a bit? Sure, sure. As a man, how did you take that? How did you recover from that as, you know, men are meant to be the leaders of the home for then for you to fail? How did you come back from that? Oh, geez, you know what? It is extremely um, difficult, you know, um, but I've had so much of this. So even before Battle of the Chefs, Early on, when I first left work, I remember there was a year, Veronica was the sole breadwinner. We didn't have any kids. Okay. And mm. I went a whole year where I was working from home. Mm. And I promise you, I hadn't bought a single thing, eh? Okay. And I promise you, at the end of the year, I remember having a conversation with my sister and crying. And saying to her, hey, you know Like what? real tears. Real tears, eh? And it was because I was like, how is this possible? You know, I can't even buy a single thing. But you know what's even worse? So I started dating Veronica when I was 17. Okay. We had a joint account from when we were 20. Okay. So it's not like she didn't allow me to take the money. It wasn't any of that. Mm -hmm. I had access. But it was just, no, I'm not making enough. Let me not. And it was a stupid move. You know, and I'm so glad I had to get over that. Okay. So yes, it's tough. But you know, the reality is, if you're in this day and age, mm -hmm. and you can't figure out that you're equal partners, I think you've got a problem, eh? Okay. Yeah. So, by the sounds of it, you look like you've had quite a few failures. Oh, failures. Geez. You don't have enough time on one show. <laughs> okay. What would you say to the up-and-coming entrepreneurs on in failures in particular? Mm. Collaborate. Surround yourself with good people. People that you can work with. People Just that come you can together have fun and build. with. Yeah. And you know what? Don't be prissy. As in, don't be attached to your ideas. Okay. If it doesn't work, move. Do another one. You're ah, not a that's tree. That's a big one. Wow. You know, that's move. A, move. <laughs> move. Mood, you yeah. know. Just move. If you find that so many things are not working for you, how come you never just gave up and said, you know what, maybe being an entrepreneur is not for me. Why don't I just become an, an employee? So, a little known fact, I did. I did okay. uh, move. So, I'd start something. If it failed, I'll go get a job. And I got, you know, having a job is so cool, eh? Company having a car. basic salary. <laughs> Automatic money in the bank. You know, it's It really depends incredible. on what job as well, because not, not every job will give you that company car and automatic fuel. I was quite lucky, eh? Whenever I applied for a job, I got, I did good. Okay. I really did good. I got good jobs, you know, mm. good money. So I want to take you back to your career, where you are right now. Mm -hmm. What are the myths and assumptions um, of being an entrepreneur at this point? Right. So myth, I think, is that you've arrived. Come on, guys. We're far oh. from... From <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you have arrived. In a business, Ini. Have you? <laughs> what would you say is your motto and principle when you raise it, in raising your kids right now? So I think going to work for someone is not a bad thing. Yes. I think, you know, this is the other thing. We've suddenly become all entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entrepreneur. Yes. And I heard recently there were two million new entrepreneurs in Zimbabwe. Two million. Two mi yeah, vendors. Have you heard this? Actually, an introduction. <laughs> Hi, my name that. is Natasha. I'm an entrepreneur. It's very common. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I'm self-employed. Yeah. I'm self-employed. And, and that's the difference, right? Mm -hmm. So differentiate between being self-employed and being an entrepreneur. Thank you. And Thank you. become an intrapreneur. You know, like we have this culture at work where we're trying to say to people, guys, you know, you don't have to leave to create something new. You can create something here. Bill Gates created something huge. Mm -hmm. You know, Steve Jobs created something huge. Yes. So build something with a team. So going back to collaborate, if you don't have a team, you're not going to build anything big, guys. On your own, you build nothing. How do you go about choosing the team that you work with? Because a lot of people, eh? Yeah. Who are watching right now, I like, but... Joseph, 
I, I, I had my plan, I had my names, I had my, my boys, and we gathered, we're like, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, and then it failed. Absolutely. How do you go about choosing the correct relations or relationships when it comes to starting your business? There's no formula. I think you gotta try. Yeah. You, you try and you start with something small. You know, do something, something small. small. Something as small as dun, 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 let's have dinner. Please say it louder. Please say it. start with something. Do something small, really small. You know, don't do the audacious thing at, at on your first relationship, right? <laughs> Date. I just want to ask a question. You're saying start something small. Yeah. I get it. I understand. You know, I'm a, a lot of people are for that idea. Yeah. But why reach for the ceiling when you can reach for the sky? Okay. Why not? So you've got a choice, right? You can start something small and your risk is minimized, okay. but you understand the person better. Or you start something that you think is big and you really mess up. Which one would you prefer? I like to go big or go home. That's my policy. Absolutely. How big That's can you go? How much money can you put on the table? The sky's the limit. No, no, no. We're talking money in the bank. Okay. Do you get what I mean? Yes. So, you know what? I think we've all got these cliches. Yeah, go big or go home. Really? It's, really? About, putting, not really it's about putting it's your not money everything. where your mouth is. Yeah, exactly. It's about putting your money where your mouth is. How much is. risk can you take? That's small. If you're willing to, you call yourself an entrepreneur, how much risk can you actually take? Yeah. I, I, I know her motto is go big or go home. Yeah. Mine is fake it till you make it. Well, Me, it's that so small. It's, it's, it's not big. really that different, <laughs> Natasha. <laughs> fake it till you make it. They will believe you one day. Invest small. Speak well and make sure <laughs> they trust you. Yeah. That's yeah. all I have to say. <laughs> oh my goodness, we could go on with this topic. But Joseph, before you go, what's that one advice if someone is going to like tune in right now mm -hmm. and hear you speak? What is it that you were telling the person who's like, Joseph, I want to start, but I don't know how? I think don't overthink it. Um, start. Yeah. F you'll figure it out as you go. But there again, don't go and start and say, I'm going to be building Apple. Build something small. You know, by small, I'm saying you, if you want to get into food, figure out how to make one, two things that you can convince two people to try. But then there's so many people doing food. There's a miningi doing tomatoes on the side of the road. There is fruit and veg. I mean, there's so many people doing food. Someone sitting in their home right now is probably thinking to themselves, how do I fit in? Where do yeah. I fit in? Because everyone is yeah. just duplicating whatever has happened. So duplicating is not good. Now, I've been on the other side where everyone was, all my friends were saying, Joe, you need to go into food. You need to go into food. And it took me 20 years to finally go into food. <laughs> So you're and just still looking there to find that gap and fill it. Always and have fun. Have fun. Right now, my home is like a lab. Everywhere I walk, there's something new being created. Oh, wow. And I love it. I absolutely love That's it. That's amazing. We would love to stay on and talk a little bit more with Joseph, but our time is up. Don't go away. More on Kutsime when we come back. Get a load of this as we bring you facts around the world on entrepreneurship. According to the African Development Bank, 22% of Africa's working age population are starting businesses, the highest entrepreneurship rates in the world. Get a load of this. In 2019, a total of seven Zimbabweans made it on the Forbes 30 under 30 list. According to Forbes, Zimbabwe's richest man, Strive Masiwa, has an estimated net worth of 1.9 billion US dollars. Again, according to Forbes, our very own divine Njukula is one of Africa's successful women with a $13 million revenue company that has 3,400 employees. Her security company was also the first in Zimbabwe to get ISO certified. Now, a lot can be said in terms of business advice. You can never get enough of it and you can never get too little of it. You will always need the advice just to make sure you literally start. Now, we had Joseph Bunga in studio and he touched on fundamental points in terms of family and business, in terms of failures in business. They are going to happen. What did you think about his talk? I was just, you know, like I was impressed with how he, he sat here and owned failing. Mm -hmm. If you really look at the understanding behind failing is first action in learning. I like that. I get it. it. Well, Chucks, what was your take? Well, I'm, I'm feeding off what Chamuchi once said in the first segment. Mm -hmm. I mean, he started off by selling freezers. But look at him now. One of the 
most successful businessmen in the country, you know? Yeah. And I picked up that there's not business too small, too big, and don't give up. There's gonna be a lot of obstacles in your path, but keep, keep it on. Keep it yeah. on. And like, I'm just gonna feed off what Chuck said, especially when, don't let your dream just be a dream. Make it your reality. Because if you just let it be a dream, somebody will be living your reality. So here is my take of this. When you're talking business, you're talking entrepreneurship, especially if you are living right here in Zimbabwe. If you are doing business in Zimbabwe, come close. La li, la la. Business in Zimbabwe, adapt or die. Nishilo. Until next week, remember to comment, like and share. Click the subscribe button and follow us on all our social media handles. They are somewhere right about here. Until next week. Good night.